If you're looking to get into 3D printing, this could very well be the best printer for you to start with. It's pretty cheap at around 200 pounds, it's super easy to use, the print quality is amazing, and it's compact too. Let me show you around it, show you what it's like to print on, give you some bits of advice if you do pick one up, and give you a bit of a, an idea if you should pick one up yourself. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So let's start with a quick tour. Now the printer is pretty compact, its footprint is smaller than a fairly small mouse pad, and height-wise you're looking at about 40 centimeters, so really not that massive. Now that does mean that the print bed is fairly small, but we'll get onto that in a second. On the front you have a touch screen, a resistive touch screen, which uh, lets you control basically the printer in full. You have a settings for tools where you can say manually move the print head up and down. Uh, you can also, or I suppose the build platform I should say, uh, you also have options to print from here of which it shows you a thumbnail of what your print looks like from your slicer software. So really easy to know what you're looking for. Um, and then on the back you have the DC in from the power brick and a USB port for the included USB stick to load your prints on. And that's pretty much it. So under the plexiglass cover, you'll find the single moving parts here, which is the print bed, which you can remove from the axis by just unscrewing the knob at the top and sliding it off. This is really useful for getting your prints off once they are you know, stuck to the bed. Uh, so you can just slide it on and off without much problems. You also have the print vat down at the bottom, the vat that holds the resin, and that's held in by two thumb screws. Do make sure, by the way, that when you go to print, those thumb screws are thoroughly screwed down, otherwise your print will fail. Don't ask me how I know. Now, the print vat itself has a very thin plastic sheet under the bottom, which you should be careful to not scratch or damage, as that's what holds all of the resin in. And under the print bed, you'll find the display, which does all of the curing. Now, leveling the bed is a pretty important procedure here. In fact, the only maintenance procedure you really need to do, but it's very easy to do, so no big worries. What you do is grab a sheet of A4 paper and rip it to size, just one sort of ply thick if you like. Uh, then remove the vat and put the paper down on top of the screen. Then turn the printer on, press tool, manual, and then the left middle button, and the print bed will drop down onto the display. Now, when this uh, finishes moving, what you want to do is try and move the sheet of paper. If you can't move it, then that's a good sign. Uh, you want to check all four corners of the print bed. If you can't move it or it's uh, pretty stiff moving uh, on all four corners, then you're all good. If, however, like mine, it's loose on one side, then what you want to do is grab the included Allen key and unscrew the two screws that are on the sort of ball joint of the print bed, level it, and then tighten them back up and check again. As for the resin you will need, you don't have to get Elegoo brand resin. Any 405 nanometer resin will work just fine, but I did end up going with Elegoo, at least for my first bottle anyway. Now the slicer software will tell you how much resin each print will use, but I generally recommend filling the vats to about a third of the way so that when it goes to print, it's never without resin when it goes to cure. Um, and obviously you can just top it up between prints and you're pretty much good to go. Speaking of the slicer software, it's actually pretty easy to use, although it does seem slightly limited in its functionalities. If you import multi-piece models all as one you know, file, then you can't seem to split those files up to rearrange them on the print bed. You would have to split those pieces up manually and then import them one by one, but you can import as many pieces as you like, and as long as they're not you know, physically overlapping, you can print across the whole surface area of the print bed. The slicer software does allow you to rotate, scale, and even hollow out models, which you will want to do if you want to save a good amount of resin, especially if you're printing solid things like this Pikachu. I would also mention you should probably make sure that there are drain holes in your models, as I didn't, and this Pikachu, despite being a hollow model, is mostly full of resin, since as it prints, it captures it all and sort of uh, surface tensions it all up, and so I've now got quite a large bubble uh, of semi-solid resin inside this model. Now, a word of advice when slicing your models, I would generally recommend that you tilt most of your models back by 45 degrees if they need any level of support. 
Also keep in mind that you may need supports even when you don't think you do because of the way that the overhangs work. Uh, for example, this Baby Yoda model definitely needed supports for the ears and for the arms as it prints upside down and so there would be nothing for the tip of this hand to adhere to. When you print this, if you print it flat, uh, this big surface area for the, the base won't adhere to the supports at the bottom as it's just such a large surface area and won't break away from the bottom of the vat and will end up in a failed print. Now, one of the nice things is that when the prints do fail, it tends to only harden a fairly small amount of resin, unlike a FDM, your standard uh, filament 3D printer, which will just carry on the entire rest of the print and waste all of that other uh, filament too. Another piece of advice I would give you is try and make use of the entire bed area. Because this hardens across the entire bed simultaneously, the length and width of the models you're printing don't matter at all. Print time is entirely dependent on the layer height or however many layers there are. And so the lower and wider you can make your models, the faster they will print and the more efficient the process would be. So for example, you could technically probably print this Pikachu model and the Yoda model simultaneously, and it would take about the same amount of time as printing one of them, but you get two models out of it. Just to give you an idea, print time for each of these models was around about three to four hours, depending again on the exact layer height. When I tilted the Yoda model backwards, it actually decreased the time by about half an hour since the overall height was reduced. And finally on the advice section, this resin isn't nice stuff. I highly recommend you pick up a box of disposable gloves so that when you're handling anything to do with the resin, you're wearing them. Uh, and ideally you'd be wearing a face mask as well as it really isn't nice stuff to breathe in. Also make sure that the printer is in a well ventilated area. I had a window open and a fan blowing the you know fumes out of the window as if I didn't have that, it smelled pretty bad, pretty toxic in my house. You will also want to wash your prints after they come out of the vat in isopropyl alcohol. I have uh, an old ice cream tub that I've uh, semi-filled and then I put in and basically just shake it up to rinse them off. And then you'll also want to cure your prints after they come out. Now they are mostly cured when they come out of the printer, but they're not quite as hard as they maybe should be. And so you'll want to either cure them in the sun for a few minutes or under a UV LED, of which you can pick up on Amazon for 10 to 15 pounds, including the nail, uh, cure, you know, like nail paint uh, curing lights as well. But what about print quality? Well, that is honestly phenomenal. The nice thing about resin printers is that because it's just fusing perfect layers every time, there are no layer lines to this. These are essentially production ready models. Maybe you wanna do a bit of sanding for where your uh, support beams attach. Uh, that does tend to leave a few little well, imperfections, but when you look at the models, they are fantastic. If you look at this baby Yoda, you can almost see the like fur on his jacket or in his neck on a model that is, you know, the size of my pinky finger. It's absolutely tiny and you still get that level of detail. Even looking at the benchy, you know, little boats, you can see that on the top and on the sides, you can see the layer lines for where wood would essentially be on the model. That's how incredibly detailed and accurate this can be. And also if you look at the front of the boat, you can see how incredibly smooth it can be too. So should you get one of these? Well, if you're looking for an incredibly cheap 3D printer, one that's super easy to use, one that gets amazing quality prints, then I don't really see too much reason not to. There is a few downsides to this. Obviously the fact that you have to, you know, be wearing gloves and a mask to print something and have good ventilation. Also a fairly small print bed size overall. And the fact that you have to wash the prints and cure them afterwards is a bit of a pain, but the quality and the ease of use that this thing has, and especially the price, really, really outweighs the, the negatives for me here. And one other thing to mention is that the resin does seem to be a bit more expensive sort of per print than filament would be for the same uh, final output size. I don't think that that's a massive deal, especially considering the very low cost of the printer itself, and especially just the ease of use and the fact that as long as you slice it well, you pretty much don't get failed prints. So big thumbs up there, massive, massive recommendation. I should also mention I paid for all of this with my own money. Uh, this isn't a review sample, 
kind of like normal. So these are my um, personal opinions. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the quality? What do you think of the printer itself? And if you want to check out the printer or even the resin I've used, then I'm gonna leave links to them in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. There are a load of links in the description you can check out from, like I said, the ones for the printer and the resin to stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs. There's also stuff like Overclock UK affiliate links if you're buying from there, VPN options, Humble Bundle and Streamlabs OBS and a load of other stuff too. There's also that subscribe button, like I said, if you want to see more videos like this one or generally more PC hardware <laughs> as usual. Uh, there's also plenty of other videos you can check out over there. Maybe check out my old uh, analysis a8 review uh, which is a more standard um, FDM printer that I didn't necessarily have the best time with overall um, but yeah that's pretty much it if you've got any questions feel free to leave those in the comments down below and otherwise we'll see you in the next one